Hey, guess what? I'm a ding dong. Let's data dive. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Data Dive powered by Market Movers. My name is Tyler Nethercott, better known as Teapot, and I am back, back from vacation. And it's time that someone finally held me accountable. No, really, it's true. Sure, I give all the right disclaimers, but this time, O oh, for five. O oh, for five, that's really bad. It's just embarrassing. It's not quite Detroit Pistons embarrassing, but it's still not great. See, back in early September, I threw five names out into the ether of basketball players who I thought were poised to blow up a bit. I looked at the most improved Vegas odds, and then I used the old eye test, plus some general card history, to try to predict who would have fly under the radar potential. That's what we see a lot of times. The guys who sort of fly under the radar are the ones with the most pop potential in their cards. And this time, I just got it completely wrong. As always, this video is brought to you by Market Movers. Visit marketmoversapp.com and use promo code DIVE when you check out. This now gets you 14 days completely free to try out Market Movers and then 20% off for life as long as you're subscribed. Now let's get into the data. All right, so you know there's a reason. I give all the disclaimers so that I can avoid uh, maybe being trolled with Will Greer things and other stuff on the internet. I'm not trying to tell anybody ever what to do. I do a lot of this for fun, especially these types of videos where I make predictions on who I think could have potential. Some of them I buy, some of them I watch and look for opportunities to you know, buy at a certain price. Some of them I don't end up buying. I'm gonna start out with the most improved player odds. And I referenced this back in the video and I've used this in the past to try to predict because the thing is, when you have a player who's already a known commodity, it can be harder for them to go up in value. And we're gonna look at one of those types of players today. If you look at last year, and I cover this you know, throughout the season and after the fact at the players who went up the most, it's the guys who nobody's talking about before the season whose prices are maybe flat or even dipping a little, and then they suddenly have some kind of a blow-up season and suddenly everybody loves them and their card prices are going up. So I used most improved player odds to try to have an indication of who is Vegas predicting to break out this season. Last year it was Jalen Brunson, you know, who broke out some other players. So I will tell you, if we look at this list, this looks nothing like it did before the season. It's actually impressive how different this list looks. Now we've got Maxi, Shingoon, Scotty Barnes, Kobe White, who saw him coming, Tyrese Halliburton, Tyler Hero, quickly, a few other guys. I don't think any of these guys were on the list. In fact, the guys who were on the list were many of the ones who I was featuring in this uh, video that I did back in September. So I wanted to point that out. This can shift pretty dramatically. I'd expect this list probably to change again throughout the season, depending on what happens. Uh, we know that Halliburton just got injured, and, you know, that type of stuff can happen. So let's start out with my first pick. And my first pick was Mikal Bridges. I talked about his wingspan. I talked about his usage with the Nets. I love this guy. He's seriously the type of player I'd love to have on the Pistons. I'm a big fan. He's not having a bad season, averaging 21 points, five rebounds, four assists, but that's five points fewer per game than last year with the Nets, while his turnovers are up and his scoring efficiency is markedly down. And the Nets are just a stanky 16 and 21. So for Bridges, it hasn't been the coming out party that I had hoped for. Now the Nets are saying that he's a big part of their future. It just hasn't translated into his card prices. So I'm snapping a chalk line back on September 7, when I originally recorded this video and I'm looking at the same exact cards that I highlighted then. And again, these are the more you know commodity cards. They're easier to track price trends over time. It's not necessarily the cards that I would go out and buy. But if we look at this up until now, you can see this card down 54% uh, and 43% on his Prism Silver since that time frame. That's a huge crash. Huge crash. This card started out at 148 bucks, now down to $68. Now we know the overall card market has continued to trickle downward month over month. So there's something to that. But in this case, these two cards are down significantly. Now I did point this out back then that I thought it was crazy. And it wasn't just the Bridges cards, but it was some of the other players that the nine versus the 10 was a huge gap. You can see $28 back then on the nine. That's now down to $16. So sure, that's a 43% decrease, but it's only $12, okay? Look at his PSA 10, which was at 148 bucks, now down to $68. That's an $80 decrease. So if you had bought, let's go, you know, say you go back then, and you had bought six PSA 9s, uh, you know, at, during that time frame, the decrease, yeah, I guess, you know, you're hedging a little bit. 
I like to go for the nines. I like to mitigate that risk a little bit. You can diversify across different players. When I see a gap that's like that, where it's more than the usual three, sometimes four X, uh, but that's more like a almost six X, uh, five X, I guess. That's, a, that's too big of a ratio. I'd gravitate toward the nine because you're usually gonna see these kinds of price trajectories. And you've seen the nine hasn't come down quite as far. I talk a lot about that floor too. These two cards I had pulled up, they really don't have a very high population. This one actually, I just, I don't even know if it exists, hasn't really sold. So that's uh, the case with Mikael Bridges. Now the second guy on my list was Desmond Bain. Now if Mikael Bridges has an insane wingspan, Bain is like a bulky T-Rex out there. Bain's having a pretty good year though. He's averaging 25 points, five assists, five rebounds, still really great scoring efficiency, and he has increased his points per game by three from last year. He's a really good two-way player, but man, if the Nets are stanky, Memphis is putting out some uber stank with a paltry 13 and 23 record. And now Jaw's done for the season, that's not going to help their record improve. When we look at Bain's cards, it's been a similar story since that time frame. again, going back to September 7. Uh, actually not quite as bad as Mikael Bridges. He's down just 2% on his Prism Silver PSA 10, so he's actually kind of flat. He's actually up on the PSA 9, uh, 17%, but you know, that's just a few bucks. Again, you're seeing that insane gap. Like in these two cards here, where I'm seeing 20 to $21 for his PSA 9, and I'm seeing $123 for his PSA 10, I'm gonna go to this nine every single time. It's still gonna be a very liquid card. You're gonna see price increases. And when you're looking at a card of this value, I think it's even more likely that if he catches fire a little bit, that this card would spike more than this one. And we've seen that in this case. On his Optic Hollow, down 10%, down 36% on the nine. So, you know, you could say, oh, well, look, this is disproving your point. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, generally, I think you, you kind of see that track record with the nines. Bain overall, obviously, I think of the players that I had picked, he's maintaining the best. He's a really solid player. It's gonna be really interesting to see if he's with the Grizzlies long-term or what that looks like, but they've really fallen from grace compared to being a real contender, I think, in the West in previous seasons. Now sort of falling apart. Ja came back, was playing well. Now he's done for the season. My third pick, oh, Cade Cunningham. I admit it, it was wishful thinking and I said as much. I actually said, I hope I'm not deluding myself here. That's what I said in the video. Well, I was. Cade has arguably been the worst player in the NBA this year. When you stack up his total minutes played, his abysmal shooting, and his high turnovers, plus inconsistent defense, and did you all know, this really sickens me. To be honest, it was rumored the day of the 2021 NBA draft <clears throat> that the Oklahoma City Thunder had offered Shea Gilgis Alexander to Detroit straight up for the number one overall pick. And at the time I was saying, take it, take it, take it. I love Shea. Even back then, before he had broken out, I saw the potential and everybody here will attest to that. It was bad enough that Shea was drafted by the Clippers with the pick from Detroit as part of the Blake Griffin trade way back when. It hurts so, so much, so much. You know what hurts more? The most supreme, all time worst, creme de la stank three and 34 record from the Pistons. And if you have seen Avengers Infinity War, you know the whole soul for a soul. That's the meme. The Lions have had an all-time great season, and what did it cost? The Pistons. So let's look at Cade's cards and switch over here, and it really hasn't been particularly good for Cade cards either. Not quite Mikal Bridges bad. His PSA 9, down 41%. Now this one, again, this is back to that floor versus ceiling thing because this one was up at $70. When you start getting closer to zero, the closer you get to zero, the less room there is for really a graded card to come down. I've done videos in the past about how they can go down to a dollar, but typically not for a player who's you know averaging 20 plus points per game. This one's down to 41 bucks. That's a 41% decrease. His PSA 10 is down $40, which is just a 10% increase. And then on his hollow, he's down four and a half percent and 27%. So I don't know, maybe my PSA nine versus 10 theory is totally whack, but it's still, I, when I see this type of a gap and it continues to widen, where in this case you've got, you know, it's a lower, much lower gem rate, pop 217 versus 625 on the nine versus the 10. That can certainly have something to do with it, but I still think that's pretty crazy. $41 for a nine, $350 for a 10. For some flaw that's usually imperceptible to the human eye, I'm gonna go to the nine pretty much every time, especially if it's for my PC. All right, moving on to the fourth pick, Austin Reeves. I just thought that the opportunity was there to get more minutes and to shine 
as maybe the third option with the Lakers. I didn't expect Reeves to blow up and like, you know, light the world on fire, start averaging 27 points per game or something. But I did think he's playing for the most popular team in the NBA next, and he's playing next to LeBron. So I thought, you know, the hype train never hurt card prices. We saw that last year with him. This time, no, no, no. And I'll give a shout out to my guy FD from Rolling with FD, who had raised some eyebrows about this one when I made that pick. So Reeves is actually having, I don't know, a pretty nice role player type of year. Uh, you know, not top tier, but definitely a nice role player year. It's not paying any dividends for his card prices either. He's actually down pretty significantly. Now, he doesn't have an Optic Hollow rookie card, but he does have a Prism rookie card. And in this case, the PSA 10, it's down 67%. His PSA 9 is down 81%. So here, this is actually really interesting, right? <clears throat> he went from $72 on the PSA 9 down to $14. Now we're getting to that floor territory. How much do you have to lose on a guy like Reeves? There's talks about him potentially being traded. The Lakers are looking to make moves. Could he find himself in a situation with another team that's not necessarily a contender, but getting, I don't even more usage where he's not having to defer to LeBron, who is you know heavily ball dominant? I don't know. I'm theorizing. At 14 bucks, I'm probably gonna be looking for a nine of that card just to hold it and see. Plus I like Reeves, I like his game. I think it's a pretty cool card. Uh, and that's cheap, you know, it's about as cheap as it gets. Last one that I'd picked, number five, and last but not least, well, actually, yes, least, very much least, and actually who I think is really the worst player in the NBA, and that's Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole has the fifth worst effective field goal percentage in the NBA this year on qualified leaders with a 10.9 player efficiency rating. 10.9! If the Detroit Pistons as a team were embodied by a player, it would probably be Jordan Poole. Now, they're probably preparing to do something ri ridiculous like trade Jalen Duran for Jordan Poole. That would be very Pistons. I thought Poole would have gaudy numbers. Knowing that the Wizards were going to be low on talent, I really thought it would be Poole and Kuzma and their show. Instead, it's just Kuzma. I honestly don't understand how the Wizards have a better record than the Pistons. The Pistons are definitively a better team. That Wizards roster is a complete joke. And if we jump over and look at Jordan Poole, who just doesn't act like he wants to be an NBA player anymore, his cards are tanking like crazy. Down 64%, 65%, 62%, 53%. It's just not good for Jordan Poole at all. He, his numbers are abysmal this season. I don't know that he can rebound. He had every opportunity here to be the guy to show up, and he just doesn't seem motivated by it. So if we summarize all of that, <clears throat> I've got a handful of players here. I've got Bain down 5%, Cade down 17%, Reeves 21 Bridges 30 and Jordan Poole down 34%. Now here's what's really interesting on this. <clears throat> you see Anthony Edwards. I had mentioned him sort of as an honorable mention in that video that I did. Again, I said I was looking for fly under the radar people, not somebody like Edwards who was very much being talked about. But even with a guy like Anthony Edwards, right? Anthony Edwards, the Wolves are in first place in the West, surprisingly, to everybody's surprise, they're in first place in the West. Usually surprises work really well for a team. And they have the second best record in the league right now. Ant-Man prices are still down 7.9%. Anthony Edwards is the closest player to Kobe I've ever seen since Kobe. That's my opinion, but I know people who share that opinion. It's one of those things where you, it's just more than stats. You have to see him play. You have to know the hustle, the grit, the drive, the clutch, the confidence. It's all there, all of it. He's a team player. Plus, he's from here in Atlanta, so you know he's a gamer. His price is still down even in spite of that. So what about the overall basketball card market? Well, if I jump over, this is very, very, very embarrassing. Uh, I have filtered by pretty much all, I'll call them qualified players with a certain number of cards. I'll, I'll drop my filters down here and show you. At least a $20 average, rookie cards only, graded cards only, and a minimum of 50 sales on cards in the last 90 days. Robert Williams III is down the most, and then it's Jordan Poole. So the guy I said, hey, I think this guy's going to pop up. I actually had a lot of confidence in that. Of those five guys, I felt really confident that Poole was going to have gaudy numbers this year. He's down the second most of all NBA players whose cards we're tracking in Market Movers. And then you just got to go a few more down, and Mikael Bridges is number five, down 30%. So not only did I go 0 for 5 on my picks, I really, I almost couldn't have missed worse. That's very, very embarrassing. All right, let's switch over here. It's almost like fantasy sports, right? You think you have this great fantasy draft, you've got this strategy, and then guys just don't pan out. They don't work at all. 
Uh, I think it happens to all of us, and that's why I say all the time, I'm, I don't have a crystal ball. Nobody, and I mean nobody, if you disagree and you had this predicted, let me know in the comments, but I don't think anybody saw Kobe White coming out of anywhere. That guy looked like he couldn't shoot the basketball at all. He was like 33% field goal percentage, just didn't look like an NBA player over the last couple of years emerges as a most improved uh, candidate, as like a six man of the year candidate. Uh, Bull's probably gonna shake up their roster a little bit, and he looks like a guy that they're gonna wanna keep. Shingun is awesome. He's honestly, he's one of the most fun players in the NBA to watch. He's, people call him mini Jokic. He, that's definitely what he is. He can pass as well as anybody in the NBA. Halliburton's unbelievable, like otherworldly efficiency in both scoring and shooting. It was sad to see him go down with, I think he hyperextended his knee or something recently. And then you've got Julius Randle, who started out the season just as like a brick master, like just absolutely brick master. He's up 20%. Uh, that didn't translate well to a galactic rookie card that I sent through auction on Comsi, just hoping to get whatever I could, and it sold for $3. So that was frustrating. <laughs> I would have kept a galactic super short print case hit from uh, back in his rookie year if I had known it was going to sell for $3, but you roll the dice. Quickly just got traded. He's up 12%. Towns having a really nice season with the Wolves. And that's interesting, right? I think people had kind of given up on Towns. He just seemed to be sort of stabilizing in his numbers. The Wolves weren't very good. All of a sudden they're playing well. He's playing really well. So he's actually up where Edwards is down a little bit. You got Maxi, who's on that list for most improved. And so look at this list. My philosophy was right. My philosophy was right to go back to the most improved list. Maxi, Shingun, Kobe White, Halliburton, Hero, Quickly, and then go back to this, those are all the guys whose prices are up. The problem is Vegas got it completely wrong. So I'm gonna blame Vegas on this. I'm gonna blame all the people who are out there sports betting. It's not my fault, blame Vegas. And uh, let me know down in the comments if you had any of these players or what you think of this in general. So that's pretty much a wrap. It's official. I know nothing about basketball. Uh, as many of you let me know in the comments in the past, I kept sleeping on Brunson and Halliburton. Uh, not really. That list, like I said, was trying to take a stab at some low key guys. and it just completely bombs. So did you have any picks who have actually panned out so far? I get, like I said, I don't think anyone saw Kobe White coming. Maybe you had Maxi or Shangun or, you know, some of these other guys, uh, Halliburton. While you're down in the comments, do me a huge favor and like this video, make sure to subscribe and share it with a friend. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy investing, keep on collecting and make sure to have fun.